Well guys, we're going on an adventure this morning. And currently, I think it's around 7.15 in the morning. I really wanted to leave around 7, but that's okay. Things get complicated sometimes. Letting the truck warm up just a little bit before we go. It's a little cold this morning. And we're going on an adventure. <laughs> uh, it's 340 miles to where I'm going. I'm going to uh, Jasper, Georgia to pick up a service grinder. So, wish me luck. It's going to be good. Uh, hopefully we'll have some stuff worth filming along the way. So here we go. Let's get started. I tell you, sometimes it's the little things that you forget. I was supposed to wash my windshield last night and stuff got in the way. But I tell you, on this morning sun, it's awful glare. So hopefully this will clear up. I just wanted to point out kind of where I live is very rural as you can tell this is you know two lane road this is a major highway too and uh, big open land pretty much around here a lot of corn row crop farming cotton soybeans catfish chickens cows all that good stuff but yeah Lots of to change here in the next couple hundred miles, so get ready for it. Just came through Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and uh, I'll tell you what, couldn't have picked a better day to go. Traffic today, for some reason, is really, really good, so not a whole lot on the roads. I wouldn't be filming this right now if it wasn't so good. stop here I think I'm about 20 miles east of Birmingham and maybe further than that maybe 40 miles east of Birmingham stopped to eat lunch and everything just check my fuel economy and everything I'm getting like 10.2 miles a gallon which is really good for this truck pulling the trailer so not bad fixing to head back on the road and keep on going so we got a woman here about to get run over Oh, it's her husband, I guess. Uh, I'm going to have to go somewhere else to get out of here. But anyways, we'll get back on the road. <laughs> well, we just passed the Georgia state line, I think maybe five miles back. I'll tell you what, we don't have these kind of hills in Mississippi. Getting over in the low part of the mountain range in some places. Guys, we had a little bit of a problem here. 
you notice there's only one board up under there that's because it broke the one it was sitting on knocked my top halves off of here and started rubbing my tires about blew out two tires so that's never good but yeah it broke a four by four slam in half never seen nothing like that I'm going to rechain it back down hopefully we can make it back home before the night's over wish me luck guys I tell you tonight is just full of surprises I don't know if this is road work got this traffic bottlenecked or if there's been an accident I've been in this for probably about half an hour now and I don't know you know big believer in God you know this happening to the trailer you know pissed me off real bad but you never know what it might have prevented so I guess there's always a silver lining even if it's bad on both ends just wanted to point that out I've never been so glad to be home in all my life. Well, I probably said that last time I had a long trip, but this, this one here seemed like it was pretty, pretty good little run. so many problems but hey we made it it was tough we made it i tell you that's a big old thing right there we made it back home according to my watch here looks like it's 11 15 so exactly 16 hours later if my math is correct so I think that was illegal. You're not supposed to drive that long, but uh, we made it back. Um, I'll show y'all what happened, what problems I had in the morning when we got a little bit more daylight, but that's, we made it back the same day we left, in other words. So that's all good. As my grandfather would say, made it all the way there and back and didn't have an air flat. Almost did, but not this time. See y'all in the morning. Well, morning guys, day two. Ah, uh, since I was shook up last night, that was a long night. From what happened, I'm kinda gonna try to explain kinda what went on. This trailer right here is pretty unique. It's, they call it a Conaline trailer. It's actually got eight tires on it, four axles. Anyways, there's tires in the middle of the trailer. So it kinda spreads the weight out a little more better, but it's got doors on here so you can change them and what had happened was when we went to load it I asked the guy that was loading it I said hey can you put it over this front axle right here and the way we were parked and situated and everything like that I really couldn't get to it so wound up putting it about the end right here about right over the center of the axle which it needed to go just a scotch back a little bit further it was too much tongue weight but it it pulled decent it, it, it wasn't all that great though but what was happening was since it was on over balanced on the tongue it would sit there on uneven ground it would jump it would just sit there and just constantly just jump if I got over about 60 miles an hour so what happened was we went over a bad piece of ground it was a bridge actually and that some gun started bucking. I mean, it started knocking stuff off in the cab of the truck. And apparently it shifted these panels backwards. And one of these got hung up under this frame here and pushed down on that plate. And it rubbed the inside tire back there. You may can see that the tread's a little eat up there. But I mean, it was just billowing out smoke. Uh, for a second, I thought a truck behind me turbo went out or something because it was tons of smoke until I realized it was me and got on the side of the road I didn't know what I was going to do I didn't have no jack I didn't have nothing to move this thing with I was going to put a piece of 
a bar in there and tried to move it, it, it wasn't going to budge. I mean, it, it this joker is heavy. I mean, it is big time heavy. So what I wound up having to do was take a chain, come along, hook it to my my uh, my safety chain right here and pull it back. That was the only option I had. And I pulled it back far enough so I could get the, the deck lids back down and re-chain it. And that was a job. So there's a little insight on what happened. This here was the failure point. It was a knot in the wood. This shouldn't have broke like that, but you get 5,000 pounds hopping up and down on a piece of wood, it will snap it. So, plus this is some crap tactical wood here. They don't grow trees like they used to. But yeah, that was my night last night. One for that, it'd been okay. But hey, we got it here. We didn't kill anybody. We didn't lose nothing. So we're okay. Everything works out. All right, we're getting ready to unload this big old heavy sap sucker. And you notice we ain't got but one side here, so I'm going to figure out a way to get up under there with the forks. But I got a Quavus over here. It's going to do it for us. I know he don't look like much, but he's like me, real strong, just ain't got the ass. So we're going to hook up to this joker and pick it up. Wait a minute. What the heck? Well, uh, Quavis ran away. Uh, apparently that was too much for him. I hired his uh, brother, Homangelo, over here. We're going to pick it up and set it off with that and see if Quavis comes back, see if we can move it in the shop. So we'll go with that. I'll show y'all where I'm gonna go with it. I actually had to break down half my bench so we could put it right there in that little spot. I think it'll be cozy right there. And we're gonna see if we can make it in here. Now, Quavis is only a 3,000 pound lift, so how many y'all wanna bet it won't pick it up? We're gonna give it a shot. If it don't, then uh, the lull's too big to drive in here. So we might have some issues trying to figure out what to do. So we'll give it a shot first. Let's see if we can have lift off. Come on, Quavis.
hands up in the air. Damn, that's the saddest lip I've ever seen that size. or something like that just to give it enough height and uh, I'll jack these up high enough to get these blocks out from under there and now I can level it so I think that would be a pretty good plan but she is a beast that is a big machine get up for Quavis uh, stoutest 3,000 pound lift I've ever seen but uh should be good I'll go over a few things on it and show you some characteristics that I like and Maybe we'll get this old girl going one day. <laughs> All right, let's take a big, old, let's take a little closer look at this big old green machine here. Now this is a Thompson eight by twenty inch surface grinder, and this is everything that came with it, minus uh, some four by fours that it was sitting on, and uh, still got all the shields for it and everything. This is a really, really unique machine. It's old. I'd say mid sixties somewhere in there. It's got a brown and sharp magnetic vise on it. I don't know if you can read that or not. Came with it. It's probably all out of calibration. But uh, I think it can be cleaned up and still used. It's still magnetic so everything still works in it. This is a, this is a big machine. I didn't realize how big it was when I bought it. Um, it's pretty cool a lot of this old equipment especially it tells you how to lubricate it and everything which you're supposed to do a lot better nowadays and most of the stuff it don't even tell you how to turn it on more or less what to do to help it live its life more or less now this surface grinder is pretty unique the ones I've ran they they didn't have a power uh, Y they had power X which this is your X slide right here this handle We'll go back and forth with the chuck, but it also has power Y, so the uh, the rock more or less will move this way, and you've got two adjustments here to run them. I don't know which one does what, but one of them runs the X, you can run it faster or slower, and the other one runs the Y faster or slower. So that's pretty neat. The uh, the spindle raise is this handle here. You probably can't see it coming up. A little too shaky. But uh, it's in increments of a thousands, or just one thousand really. Uh, the other ones I've run were tents, so this is going to be a different change. This must be a roughing machine. That's the biggest thing that I can think of. It's pretty neat. Got a few problems with it. The uh, Y carriage here, it's something's not working right in it. It's got manual feed on it, which you have to pull over and adjust but when you try to crank it 
it wants to move, but something's stuck or broke or something, so I got to figure out what's wrong with that. And the other big problem is this is a three-phase machine, which that's usually not a problem. It's usually a good thing, but I don't have three-phase here at the shop. And some of y'all know that my mill right here is powered by a uh, G2 inverter, which that's all fine and good if you're only going to run the spindle. But here's the problem. It's also got hydraulics on it, and that's a whole different motor. You're either going to have to have two to run them, or you're going to have to come up with something else like a rotary inverter, which that's probably what I'm going to have to do next. And that's going to be a whole other thing. But uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. I uh, got it on a pretty good deal. It's got some unique features about it I've never seen, like this uh, diamond dresser to dress the wheel. I've never seen one mounted quite like that. It's It's got some really, really neat aspects. So wish me luck on getting this thing going. I'm going to clean it up, shine it up, get everything working, figure out what we're going to need for electricity-wise and how hard that's going to be. Shouldn't be too awfully bad, but you know how that goes. Something that seems simple might take you a year before you can actually get it to work like you want it to. So I'm looking forward to it. I wiped the old gunk off the uh, brass plates here. Apparently you've got a setting for hand feed, you've got a neutral, and then you got a hydraulic feed on this dial. This one's got intermediate feed or continuous feed, so that's that's pretty neat. That's got some rheostats in there. That is pretty neat. Well guys, that's probably going to wrap it up for this one. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you've run a machine or have one similar to this. I would love to hear about it. Uh, some of the characteristics that it may have or good luck, bad luck that you've had. So let me know. Once again guys, thank y'all for joining me with it on this trip. It, it was a little unnerving, but it was a good one to say the least. Um, as I'll always, y'all take care. Subscribe to me if you haven't already. Like this video. Guys, I will see y'all next time. Y'all take care, and God bless. Boom.